but from a spectacle point of view, you couldn't have asked for anything better. No, no, it was it was a real s old slugging match. <laughs> when both teams got, we 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 were going, you know, we we were going for it. I ended up with Lennon, Bentley wide, Modric playing. You know, Darren Bent came on and did well when he came on. So yeah, we were, we had to go for it in the end, and uh, we we managed to get it. Well, I'm angry. I'm disappointed, and uh, but. On the other hand, I have to to uh, say uh, in the most uh, uh, difficult moments like that, I believe as well that my team produced an outstanding game today and uh, we really deserved to win. And maybe we wanted too much to keep the result and uh, uh, became a bit too cautious and put ourselves under pressure instead of continuing to score goal five and six. And that, uh, I believe that uh, it's a little bit lack of maturity. But on the other hand, I would say as well, Underline this was outstanding quality today, and we were at a, f a fantastic game. Are you getting any sleep at the moment, Harry? I mean, it's been no, a bit of a whirlwind, bit of a whirlwind, that's it. Whirlwind, John. Yeah, it's been. It's been a difficult week, and uh, sort of leaving home half past five in the morning and getting home about nine at night has been uh, been very difficult this week. But uh, tonight made it all worthwhile. So did Sunday. Stunning <laughs> game of football, wasn't it? Uh -huh. Well, I don't know where to start, to be honest. It, it was just an incredible game of football, one I, I, I so enjoyed watching. I mean, it was just 100 mile an hour from, from both teams, from start to finish. And I think, if I'm honest, then it, a point was, was a fair result because um, no one deserved to lose that yeah. game. Both of them just went at each other, hammer and tongs. And, and it could, there could have been more goals, it was innit? It so exciting. Hansen jumped up out of his chair for a Tottenham equaliser. I never thought I'd see the You ever seen him He's had it all his life. 4-4. Who would have thought it? Proper game of Unbelievable. football. Now, I suppose for Harry, he's coming in, it's quite easy for him to work out what the positives and negatives are mm. with a 4 4 scoreline. Well, start, I, start with the good. Well, we'll have to start with the good because uh, he's, he's just given some players some freedom, in particular uh, uh, Bentley. I mean, 43 yards. What's I mean, goal? stunning, stunning strike. And I think you're going to see him improve. And I, I was very impressed with him tonight. Modric, I thought, was, uh, was very good again. Bent come on and scored again. Aaron Lennon, the two subs come on and scored and it's a great shot from Modric, a little deflection and Aaron Lennon, as I said, the sub come on, Harry's got the equaliser, I mean you can see what it, what it means to him already and I mean what a, what a few days he's had, just incredible, okay. unbelievable. What's he got to work at? I don't think it takes a genius <laughs> to work out, I can't believe there's been eight goals tonight and, and I, I mean he's, uh, he's been a bad influence on me hasn't he, eight mm. goals and I'm talking about defending mm. but if you're going to start with a goalkeeper, I know he's had his criticism on Sunday and rightly so, he's come for that first one, nowhere near it. Comes for the second one, catches it, drops it. Lucky to get away with it. Galas over the ball. Can't come from ev for every ball. I mean, he's trying to get over seven players here. He's going to get absolutely nowhere near that ball. He has to trust his defenders to try and head that away. But having said that, he's put his trust in the defenders in Choluca here, who's marking Galas. Again, he's nowhere near him. Should be marking him, should be. But tremendous game of football. Yeah. But Harry, I'm sure will have his priorities, he'll be a goalkeeper and a centre-half for when Ledley King can't play. What, what do we both make of the appointment of, of Harry Redknapp? Oh, it, it was a bit of a surprise, came out of the blue, but... Well, I think it's a really good appointment because, obviously, Harry not only knows the game, but he knows the English game inside out, and it's a dream job for Harry to take over when Tottenham can only basically go one way, and that's up yeah. two points for the first eight matches. But he's, he's got a proven track record. He's got a great bunch of players there, and I think he'll do really well. It's also changing yeah. the way that, of doing things at Tottenham. Well, I think the they have a tradition, don't they? Of, they have a tradition of going forward and playing attack and football. I think what you'll get is, is you'll get exactly that with yeah. Harry. I think they're mm. going to concede a few until he gets a few in defensively. But going mm. forward, I think they'll score goals. Y you wanted to say something about Arsenal? Well, um, Arsene Wenger talks about lack of maturity. I think they were naive. Uh, they've got this way of playing that's brilliant to watch, but you know, you're know, 4 up after 88 minutes. Clichy gets the ball on the left-hand side. Get it in the corner because you, you want to see the they game don't up. They play that way. Well, yeah, they don't play, but they paid they're the ultimate pure. price for it because they've come back. He's, he's picked up, he's trying to play it there, two yards, two yards, he slips. Genesis gets at the back in the game and they've dropped two points. And we if wouldn't you, be satisfied saying how good it was. <laughs> Let's move on. If you're going to win the championship, you can't do that. The Stoke today, Abdul Ufai, the Stoke City player, has said of all the real contenders to win the Premier League, Arsenal are the softest. Um, certainly mayhem, wasn't there, Charlie, after that game against Spurs in midweek. You do wonder a little what morale is like at Arsenal at the moment. Yeah, I've... I've been wondering for the last two or three weeks because uh, you get a bit of momentum going and you know the, the struggle at Sunderland, the late equaliser, you think, poor, it gathers momentum now. And the results start to look better. 
I was actually quite pleased with the West Ham performance, Jeff. It wasn't stunning. He used the bench quite well. I think we spoke about that the day before, that sometimes will he play Theo, who's hot in form, but he's using the bench quite cleverly now. And I don't think he's been that great arson over the years are using his bench as well. Benitez is good at it. Mourinho was always good at it. And, of course, Alex Ferguson was a master at it. But I think, generally, I looked after the West Ham thinking, I'm quite happy. It looks as if they've got their focus back. They've got that a little bit of... They've got rid of that little arrogance that they don't always need at the start of a game. You've got to earn the right to be arrogant. There's nothing wrong with having But Charlie, it. look at the body language at the end of that game. I mean, there's all sorts of dressing room rows. Mm -hmm. Look at the body language of William Gallas. I know he's not playing today, but this is the end of the game. Yeah, listen, there's been two or three weeks it's going on, and that's why I was pleased with the shot we had with a cigarette the other week. Uh, and Arsene Wenger at least having a pop. I'm thinking, this is the most animated i've seen arson wenger recently jeff he's been getting more and more agitated by his by his own team and i think and, and reported to be particularly furious uh with sylvester well, and with gallus and cliche reported to be in were. tears at I the hope end they did you know? have a row with each other because it's time that something was said in that dressing room does that do any clear. good yes i think it does mm -hmm. the only thing i would say about that i think you sometimes need a little bit more british type players in there to understand what that generally that passion is about now, they're a little bit more educated in, in terms of the way they take it, they look at it, and, and they, but they don't like to... I think, particularly the captain, Gallas, we questioned a little bit last season. Do you know what, Jeff? I don't think he likes anybody to have a pop at <clears> him. I think he's sometimes too busy or too precious about his own little issues. It's not that man, it's someone else. Captains are not just about that. We spoke about captains last week. Sometimes you just need a guy whose performance is not going to be that... That, that worrying, but you've got to get decisions made from him. And I just look at Gala sometimes this season, he's argued with uh, Juru, I think, at different times. He's argued with Almunia recently, the last two or three weeks, cause he, and he gives him a stare at West Ham of, how dare you isolate me like that? And I'm mm. thinking, hey, you're all in it together. I just don't think there's that bond and that togetherness and that leadership that Arsenal should have. It does, it's certainly not as good as what it was in the Phil, past. Phil, have they made a mistake in not buying a big dominating central defender pre-season? Um, yes, I would think so. If uh, Arsene's always very prudent, isn't he? Um, doesn't like to splash out. Took Sylvester, and we all thought it's a good signing. You know, he's come in, he, he'll fill in for people or whatever. But as people will tell you, at Old Trafford, he couldn't, over the last couple of seasons, he couldn't nail down a, a place in the team because they felt that he was vulnerable for making a mistake. So, of course, he's come in the Arsenal. I have a look, and yes, I know what you're saying there, but I think you look at the spine of, the, of Arsenal's team, the two centre-backs have not got it right. They're not right, Sylvester and Gallas are not right. The goalkeeper, I thought, was dodgy the other night. The Nielsen is not tough enough to play in there with Fabregas. And that by the other day, and he was the one that was coming out in the press that I've seen, is he was having a pop of people. He was so poor the other night. Van Percy was magnificent. Adebayo was extremely poor, and he's coming out and telling everybody that, you know, he's got to be there, and we've got to be doing this, and he's the one who should be having a look at himself. So mm -hmm. the spine is not quite right, but it is explained last week about centre-backs playing well, doing good, Arsenal haven't got that at the, at the moment. Which makes you wonder, Paul, how are they going to cope with what they know they're going to get this afternoon? You know, Stoke 87 long throws already this season. They know the ball is going to be hurled in at them. Have they got the players to cope with this? I don't think they've got the players to cope with the throw on you. I don't. I, you know, you go through their team. They're not the biggest team. You'll start swapping the team round probably to for that. For that. Now, the thing is with Arsenal, they're, they're going to get beat at, the, at these throw ons and everything. They need to play the team that's going to get the ball down on the pitch and rip them apart with their pace and their movement. If he starts playing players just to stop this, I worry for him today. You know, I go through the team, Fabregas not the biggest, Danielson not the biggest, um, Nasri not nowhere near big, Walcott not big, uh, Gallas won't play today, but I cannot see him having stitches in his head. You know what I mean? It worries me. Cliche's not the biggest. Whoever plays right back, Zagna been playing. You know, they're all small players, very small, very good, very quick. I, I really well, worry for him today. I'll tell you what he's done, Paul. Obviously, yeah. No Gallas today, so Kulaturi does start. Theo Walcott, small. Sami Nasri, small. Robin Van Persie, not the biggest. All left on the bench today. Abu Diaby, big. 
Nicholas Bentner, big. Alex Song, relatively big. big. See, All straight star. away, Jeff, you're playing Stoke City and you're changing your whole team for Stoke City. Now, Bentner has to come back every single throw on. Now, that gets on your nerves as a centre forward. Yeah. You know, you play centre forward, throw on. Here we go. Got a goal to bait back. When we break, I'm back up the other end. Mm. You know, he's changing his whole team, Jeff. And then, when they get the ball, the RB isn't the same player as Walcott. You know, Bentner ain't. I like Bentner, don't get me wrong, but he ain't a Van Persie who was as good as anybody on the pitch on Wednesday night. It's not good. It can, win the the game. it can win the game in the last 20 minutes, Mess. I think, you know, you, you look at Arsenal the way they are. You know, imagine him coming on. You know, if the game's still nil nil, he can, he can change things as he sees fit. I think he's wanting to go solid. And it doesn't have to be Bentner. I mean, you know, Adebayo can come back and do his thing. They have to work it I think they'll both together. have to come back. No, it's, you don't have to get, you don't have to change the whole thing. I can appreciate what, what you're saying. And they're all still good footballers. See, they what should Arsenal be. haven't done for a while, and they'll have these throw-ins and corners coming in. Their counter-attack, it's gone. You know, it used to be, have you got a corner and corner everything against Arsenal? Yeah. Here we go, Phew, yeah. And they were straight at you, weren't they? When's the last time I've seen that at Arsenal? It's a long, long time. You're looking mm. at Perez on Rees days before, you know, you can look yeah. back at that. That was a skill, mm. because that would agitate the opposition. Oh, God, we've got a corner. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now you think to yourself, Stoke are right. Arsenal are the soft touch, you're the top teams, because you think to yourself, we, if we get a little break or two, Arsenal will have to play second ball. They can't go and win the first ball, they'll need to play second ball. Uh, Stoke have won the last couple of home games, Matt. They're going to begin to think that they've got a real chance of surviving. Um, they might well think that. Um, you know, if, <laughs> if, if they can keep picking up the points at home, they'll give themselves a chance, but they'll only give themselves a chance. I don't think they'll pick up enough points away from home to, to actually keep themselves in the, in the division, in my opinion. OK. Uh, Stoke uh, against Arsenal. Well, let's get some uh, predictions, shall we? Uh, I, uh, I, I'm, with, I'm going with Tom on this. I think Arsenal will hang on in there and they'll win the game in the last 15, 20 minutes. I'm going for a 2 0 Arsenal win. OK, Paul. No. Gloomy about the prospects. I'm going go for a, a, a big score draw, hmm. which would be a body blow for Arsenal. Uh, Phil? I think Arsenal will be stung into action and I think they will win. OK, Charlie? Yeah, I think they'll get a response. So just.